Good evening and happy Sabbath, everyone. It is my honor and privilege to be able to welcome everyone to the first night of our music festival weekend. My name is Bernie Culpepper, and I am the principal of Blue Mountain Academy, and I'd like to not just welcome you, but welcome to any parents, friends, visitors, alumni who may be watching online as we live stream this, this program tonight. This weekend is going to be full. Tonight, we'll be showcasing the Blue Mountain Academy music groups, La Sinette, Sylvan Singers, and Bel Canto, and have a special message from one of our senior students. Tomorrow is the big concert. You guys ready for that? Yes. I've heard a few things. We have a wonderful director. Everybody's worked hard, and I know it'll be a blessing for all of us and for you that are visiting. And who knows? Maybe some of you guys out here that are visiting today that are guest singers will be sometime in the future in Bel Canto or in La Sinette or in Sylvan Singers, providing joy and blessings for others as well. So as we lift our voices tonight and tomorrow, may the Holy Spirit come down and provide such a blessing that we walk away refreshed and ready to share with the world God's soon return and his love. Enjoy tonight, and let's have a, let's have a quick word of prayer before we start. Father, we thank you for being with us tonight. The Bible says, make a joyful noise unto the Lord. It won't be a cacophony of, of noises, but a beautiful blending of instruments and voices. So as we lift up our voices and instruments to you, Lord, we pray that it's a special blessing that comes down from you on each of us and that your spirit is here among us. Thank you for all you do. Bless the musicians. Bless us that hear. In your name I pray. Amen.
So we opened with a song, I guess you saw the title there, um, Rondo Pascaglia. Now, all of the elementary festival students rotated through the handbell and chimes class. And so you got to see firsthand, if you ha don't have a lot of training, it's not necessarily easy to ring even together, let alone in sequence like that. Did you recognize some of the techniques that we, I told you about? The bells hitting the foam, that martellato, what does martellato mean? Where's the word come from? Martello in Italian, it means hammer. And so they're like pounding the bell into the foam. Did you hear the shaking at the end? And the high bells, they were shaking. And did you see them doing two bells in each hand? We call that four in hand. So some of the advanced techniques, but it all starts with what we were teaching, what Mr. DeGraw and I were, were, were teaching you about. So the next song is going to feature um, the chimes as well as the mixture with the bells. It's a song, it's, it's a spiritual, that's a hymn in our hymnal. It's a, called, I Want Jesus to Walk With Me. Thank you. Um, and that was a chance for you to see what the, the bells and the octave, what we call the threes. Most of us played, the lowest we played in our handbell workshops were the fours. But we have that whole set of bells down there. Hold up the, C, the C3 for us. That's the biggest one, the lowest one we have. And that weighs about 11 pounds. So these guys down there, they should be getting PE credit for doing this, huh? And then right next to them, you see the... Uh, the chimes, I told you they were too big to hold, so we had them in the rack, and we played them with, with the mallet. Did you hear them when, when we were playing those songs? Nice and low, it just kind of a, you feel it more than you hear it, but it really vibrates and resonates through the, through the hall. The last song we're going to play for you in our rotation is called, If Thou But Suffer God to Guide Thee. This is a song that comes from the 1700s, but it has a very modern treatment. <clears throat> um, it was written by a young man who left home at 17 years old 
and uh, looking for work in uh, Germany. And he had to walk everywhere he went. Um, he, he lost all of his worldly possessions. And um, then they had a fire. And then he had all these things. But finally, it took him two years to find the job. Two years. Can you imagine that? And uh, finally, he found a job as an editor uh, at a newspaper. And finally, he worked his way up to, to the, the, uh, the person in charge. And he was so thankful to God for helping him find this, this job that he's, he wrote the words to this song that we're going to play. And this is also in our hymnal. Uh, if you but suffer God to guide you, in other words, if you allow God to guide you in your life, um, he'll always give you peace in your heart, essentially is what it says. So uh, here is our, our final song on uh, our part of the program, If Thou But Suffer God to Guide Thee. And I'm going to slip behind the table and I get to play on this song.
Hello, happy Sabbath. Let's say it again one more time. Happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Yeah, you guys don't sound too happy. I hope you are happy. Well, it is a great day. I know everyone's pretty tired from all the practicing, but we're here to worship God. We're here to praise him for all the good things that he's done for us. So let's sing. Our first song will be the spirit song. next song we will be singing is Majesty. And I'm going to ask you guys if you could please stand. Worship his majesty unto Jesus be the glory, honor, and praise. Majesty, kingdom of Majesty, worship. 
worship his majesty. Jesus who died, now glorified, King of all kings. Majesty, worship his majesty. Unto Jesus be the glory. Did you know there's a place where you can encounter a multicultural environment, have fun learning, and get a closer encounter with God? Well, this is my school, so come with us and we'll show you around. Here at Blue Mountain Academy, you have a chance to live in a beautiful place surrounded by mountains and lots of trees. It's in the countryside and close enough to the big cities such as Washington, Philadelphia, and New York. Being here, you'll get the chance to know more about the USA. And not only the USA, we are a rich, multicultural community, so you can meet many friends from all around the world. Yo amo a BMA. Ya lo blue BMA. 저는 BMA를 사랑합니다. Eu amo BMA. I love BMA. Well, this is Blue Mountain Academy, our beloved home. So if you want to know more, find out by experiencing it yourself. So come with us. We'll be waiting for you. Good evening, good evening, everyone. What a lovely night, right? It's raining. It's cold outside, but we have the warmth of worshiping together tonight. And it's a blessing to worship, to sing, to pray the Lord together. And I was just searching how many viewers we have on our streaming. And we have over a hundred persons so we say that we have a church in person in here and another person, whatever, all around the world. That is a blessing. We are all a big one family. And every one of the students from different schools from Pennsylvania Conference are part of that family. And we are so glad to have you here this weekend. And I have one question. I have one question, and I was asking this question myself during this week. And that question is, why? Why VMA? Hmm, why VMA? And what do you do if you have a question? In my days, I'm not too old, but when I had a question, what I used to do is ask my father, but he's not here. So these days, I know people, when they, they have questions, they go, Google, Google. Why BMA? And I did that. But I didn't have the answer that I wanted. So tonight, tonight, I'm going to invite to the stage some experts. They know what they say. 
Uh, so I want to invite Haciel, please. He's one of the experts. He's going to try to uh, answer this question for me. Thanks, Haciel. I'm going to invite Clevana as well. Thank you so much. I'm going to invite uh, Lavinia. Thank you so much. And Rosie, please. These are my experts tonight, and they are going to explain me why BMA. Why BMA? But first of all, and I want to invite you, Nathan. I saw him. He was running with the camera. So he's right there. Thank you. By the way, the short video that we just saw, that is all Nathan. So he knows what he's doing. So first of all, Hasiel, tell me, what class are you this year? Okay, I'm a senior. Wow. And where are you from? I'm from Mexico. From Mexico. How many students do we have from Mexico? Can I see hands? Wow. You are not from Mexico, Michael. I saw you. <laughs> okay, Clevana, what class are you today, uh, this, this year? I'm a sophomore. Sophomore. That's great. And where are you from? I'm from New York, but my parents are from Jamaica. Wow. How many from New York do we have in here? Wow. That's good. Lavinia, what class are you? I'm a freshman. Freshman. And where are you from? From Brazil. From Brazil. All the way from Brazil. That's great. How many Brazilians do we have tonight? Probably we have a lot of Brazilians watching online. So have a good night, all Brazil, mm -hmm. over there. Rosie. Yes. What class are you? I'm a senior. And where are you from? I'm from South Korea. Oh, mm -hmm. South Korea. That's great. And Nathan, same question. I am a junior, and I am from the beautiful city and state of Annapolis, Maryland. That's great. So, we are all presented. We have representation for every single class of VMA. We have two seniors. So, the question is, why VMA? I'm going to start with Rosie. Why VMA? Wow. Somebody understands something? I'm trying to learn English. And, my, and next year, I'm going to try to, to, to learn Korean. Can you repeat that? Beautiful words, but in English? Oh, in English, OK. So BMA has a wonderful environment. And of course, as we can see, like. I can make lots of friends from all over the world, Brazil, Mexico, Venezuela, America, like, yeah, like, we have students from all over the world, which is really nice, because, yeah, I have lots of opportunity to know the cultures and everything. That's great. Mm -hmm. So we are an international school. So when you're here, you have a little piece of the world in, in just one small place. Hasiel, why BMA? Um, in Spanish or... No, in English, oh, okay, please. Yeah, English, yeah, yeah. please. Only. Well, um, because here there are a lot of people that, uh, well, I made a lot of friends that helped me in my relation with God and make me closer to Him. Also, well, we have a great environment, and you can develop your talents on music, for example, in the choir, or if you play an instrument on orchestra, and that really helped me. Uh, to improve on that in my instrument and my in, in the choir too, in my voice. That's great. By the way, I want to send greetings to Mexico. I'm very sure that your your dad is watching us, yeah. or he's gonna watch it tomorrow. So, hi there. So, Clevana, why why BMA? Um, so for me, why BMA? I would say the memorable moments, the memorable moments that you'll make during tour. If you're a part of like the extracurricular activities like AA, which is Ariel Aries, BC, and La Sonette, you get to tour and you get to, you know, experience amazing moments with your friends. And the spiritual life here is really great. I've drawn, honestly, drawn closer to God while being here. That's great. Lavinia, you're a freshman this year. Why, how do you hear about BMA and why? Made, you made that decision to come in here. Well, I heard a lot of good things about BMA. And I chose to come to BMA because I saw that here I would grow spiritually. And when I noticed that, like, there was no 
other place that I wanted to go. Thanks. And the last but not the least, Nathan. Why VMA? Yes, I mean, I'm not going to lie, when I came here as a freshman, I was not very excited to be here, but as time went on, I mean, as many people feel, but as time went on, I started to enjoy it more and more. I mean, to reiterate, the number one thing here is our spiritual life, but also friends. You make many friendships here, especially, especially when you live in the dorm. You're, you basically turn into brothers because you're all together. You live together. You do everything together. So that's, that's one of my favorite things. Um, yep, and again, spiritually, you grow spiritually. We've had a lot of great speakers this year. Um, I don't know if I can say, but next year we have another great speaker that's coming, but I'm not going to say just in case I can't. So I'm really excited for my senior year and everything to come. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much. Now we have clear, right? Why BMA? Because all what they just said. Have a blessed Sabbath. Enjoy the music that we're going to have tonight and tomorrow. And thank you for being part of the big education department of Pennsylvania Conference. Have a good night.
Hello, everyone. Oh, it worked. It's the first time that works on me, the mic, because I'm not a friend of mics, but I'm glad that it worked. It's, I'm glad to, have, to, to be here with you and uh, to share this music with you. This concert, this part of the concert is going to be a little bit different, and you'll see why. And uh, the first song that we're going to do is Esto Les Digo is in Spanish. I want to take advantage of the large group of students that actually speak the language. So um, we're enjoying this song a lot because those are words from Jesus. And he said that where we have two or three gather on his name, he'll be there. And he is doing that through the Holy Spirit. That's the those are the lyrics of uh, Esto Les Digo. I'm going to wait until everybody gets to their places so we can start. Thank you.
Jesus. 
This is the last song, and it is Hinema Tov, and it is how good is that we, brothers and sisters, get together. And that's from Psalm 133, 1. The only thing is that it's in Hebrew. So uh, hopefully you can understand something because we don't understand, <laughs> but we just sing it. But we know what we're singing. So we're grateful to be here with you. We're grateful to have you here. And also, I have to say um, that we're grateful that we had four special uh, persons in the choir, that they're going to say goodbye to us during this week. And uh, actually, one left already. Uh, so, Valentina, Fiamma, uh, can you step here, please? Uh, but, yeah. And Tobias. Sophia and Sophia, yes. So uh, please, thank you. Thank you for coming to Hamburg, Pennsylvania, United States. And, and for, sharing, for sharing your voices with us. They show me the videos of the choir that they have. They have a very, very beautiful choir. Maybe someday we can do something together. It's it was very, very nice to have you over here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Is it on? Yeah.
I'm waiting for the, sorry guys. Hi, my name is Rafael Tavares, um, and I'm from Brazil. Currently, I live in Mexico, and tonight I'm going to be sharing um, a message called Lost in the Maze. Before we start, um, please bow down with me so that we can pray. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this night. Thank you for all the blessings. I ask you that you may use me and that everybody here may understand the, the message and help us, Lord, that we may accomplish uh, the goals that you gave us, Lord, the mission that you gave us. Help us to understand our identity, Lord, so that we can do so. Forgive our sins, Lord, and give us your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. So the name of the message is Lost in the Maze. Uh, in Spanish, it would be called... Oh, yeah. sorry, guys. Uh, in Spanish, it would be called Perdido in... En el labirinto, en portugués, perdido no labirinto. Y, basically, um, you know, Jesus taught, taught us that we can take a lot of lessons from things from our daily basis, you know. And, you know, a maze, for example. Raise your hand, please, if you have ever, ever been to a full-size maze in a garden or something like that. Or also... We have those games, you know, they can play a ball in a maze game, a puzzle. You know, we can take lessons also from these kind of things. Our Christian life is like a maze. Um, we have routes that don't take us anywhere, but we have one route, one way that can take us to heaven. You know, some of you guys know that I really like idioms and expressions, and I'm Brazilian. And if you stay enough time here on campus, you're going to be here a random Brazilian saying howdy. And when I, I'm also one of the RAs, and when I'm going door to door, sometimes I say night night, zip tight, don't let, your, don't let the bad bugs bite. And I just really like idioms and stuff like this. There's also another idiom. It says, all roads take you to Rome, you know? All roads take you home to Rome. But the thing is that uh, the meaning of this idiom is that different ways can help you to achieve different, the same goal. But when it comes to our spiritual life, you know, when it comes to going to heaven, although ma many roads, all roads take you to Rome, not all roads take you home. Not all roads take you to our heavenly home. You know, when you're in a maze, there are four things that you should do. The first thing, you should have a goal. Your goal is to get out of there as soon as possible. You shouldn't panic, you know. You have to have your goal in mind and just keep going. You need to make marks of your mistakes. So if you went to a, to a place and that didn't take you anywhere, you should mark that and say, oh, I'm not going to come back here. Or you shouldn't forget where you came from. And all these things right here can also help us in our Christian life. You know, we need to have a goal. We need to understand that our goal, goal is to go to heaven. We shouldn't panic. We're going to have troubles. Trouble is going to come. But we need to know that Jesus is by our side. And we should make marks, you know. We shouldn't be always falling for the same mistakes. And we should know where we came from so that we go, don't, go, don't get lost. You know, the Bible says that there is only one way out of this spiritual maze. Neither is there any salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among us whereby we must be saved. 
So Jesus is the only way. He's the only one that can help us to get out of this spiritual maze. You know, during the lockdown, um, I experienced a really hard time with my faith. Um, we were home for some months in Brazil. We didn't go to school. We didn't go to church. And, you know, because I didn't have a firm foundation of my faith, I ended up started doing things that they were not what a Christian should do, you know? I started doing things that the Word does. Um, for example, I started listening to rock music, you know? Um, and rock music, and one of my favorite bands was called Guns N' Roses. Another one was called um, ACDC. And just you to understand um, how bad that is, you know, one of their songs is called Highway to Hell. Just, bro, you know, the whole song is talking about how this band, they enjoy life, but they know that they're going straight to hell. And I was an Adventist, I was a Christian, and I was listening to, listening to all these kind of things. And I didn't know who I was, you know? And that affected how I acted. I didn't have a firm foundation. I had a shaky foundation. And that affected how I lived my life. You know, I'm pretty sure that I'm not the only one here that had doubts about who they are, about their identity. And when we don't know who we are, we are really easy praise to Satan. Satan has a lot of threats for us. Um, appetite, entertainment, music, knowledge, fame, sex, and romantic relationships, financial gains, and a lot of, of other things. Some of these things are good, you know, for example, music. Uh, food is good for us. Knowledge is good for us. Uh, love and sex. God made all these things. But Satan always had a way, he always has, he always has a way to use these things to make us fall, you know? Ellen White says that by beholding, we become changed. So when we fall for those traps that um, Satan put in our way, we become changed by the things that we're being, we are beholding. So for example, the music that I was listening to, it was teaching rebellion. And during that time, I was really re a really rebellious person towards my parents. You know, Albert Einstein once said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expect different results. So how can we, as Christians, do the same thing that the worldly people are doing and expect different results? How can we do the same thing and expect to go to heaven, you know? How can we live a, li a life as they live? How can we dress as they dress? How can we eat as they eat? We speak the things that they say and have the same mindset that they have. You know, Romans 12 says that we should not be conformed to this word. We should have a re uh, renewed mind, you know? And when we don't understand what is our identity, we're gonna fall into all those traps, you know? And this is gonna change how we live our lives. Um, Christianity in America. In the last three decades, Christians went from 90% of the population to 64% of the population. Nearly 50% of Adventist youth leave the church by the mid-20s. Two-thirds of Christian youth in America leave the, the faith. You see, all these things right here the result of we as Christians not know our own identity. We forgot our past. We forgot our mission and what God told us to do, you know? Ellen White said, we have nothing to fear for the future except as we shall forget the way the Lord has led us and his teachings in our past history. Have we forgotten anything? Have we forgotten our roots? You know, our history? 
Uh, please uh, raise your hand if you know what happened in 1888 in the General Conference. Three people, four, five. A full audience here, and only five people know what happened in 1888 in the General Conference. You know, I'm not blaming you guys. Uh, I'm just saying that we forgot about our own history, you know? We forgot how God um, established this church. You know, the Bible says that we are the remnant of God. It says that we are those that keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, the spirit of prophecy. And many times we disregard what the spirit of prophecy says. We also forgot our message, you know? How can we preach our message? How can we preach something that we don't even live, you know, sometimes? Our mission. You know, the Bible is very clear that every Christian should be also a missionary. And in Matthew 28, it says that we should go to all nations, preaching the gospel and baptizing those, uh, all people, all nations, in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our hope. We do all these things, not because uh, we're saved by our works, but because we're saved, we, we do those things. We love God, and we want to do His will, you know? Our hope is that one day, He's going to come back, and He's going to take us home. Oh, no. All right, there you go. Um, the Bible says that God is going to show us the way. You know, do you feel lost? If you feel lost in the maze, in the spiritual maze, or if you don't know who you are, you're not sure about who you are, God said that he's going to show you the way. He said that he would say, this is the way, walk ye in it. You know, who knows this guy, who this guy is, was, I mean. Some people, right? So this guy right here is called, was called John Andrews. He was one of the first missionaries in the Adventist church. And Ellen White said that he was the most able man um, in that time. You know, he spoke like seven or eight languages. He was a great preacher. And that man made a lot of impact in Europe as a missionary. And, you know, a lot of times uh, we think that just because we are young, we cannot do a lot of things. And that's a really uh, wrong mindset. The Bible says, please open in 1 Timothy um, chapter 4, verse 12. Again, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 12. It says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. So it's saying here that we shouldn't, you know, just go with the flow and live as all the other, uh, all the other young people live out there. We should be different. We should set an example to other people around us. Um, I see that a lot of us as youth, we want to be as the word, you know? And this man right here, he made a big impact because he started being a Christian as a uh, young person. Ellen White herself, she had her first uh, vision when she was 17 years old. Um, adults, you know, the Bible says, those who are older should speak, for wisdom comes with age. Um, I feel like a lot of times, we as youth, we don't know who we are because 
adults don't teach us in the right way. They just say, all right, you're going to keep the Sabbath, you're not going to eat pork, you're not going to do this, this, and this. But they don't teach us why. And as soon as we go to college or we go live by ourselves, we don't have a foundation for our beliefs, you know? So my request for adults here today, tonight, is please teach us, you know? Don't just throw rules at us. Help us to understand why God tells us to do some things. Help us to understand our roots, our history, the way that we took to come here and be who we are as Adventists today. Help us to understand our message, the three angels' message. Help us to understand that to preach, to say to people that they need to come out of Babylon, we first need to come out of Babylon. Our mission, help us to understand that we're not only supposed to be in the church listening, but we are also supposed to be missionaries ourselves in our daily basis. And help us understand that all these things are not merely like legalism. They have a purpose, you know. They're meant to change who we are. They're meant to show us um, what it means to be a Christian. And they're meant to help us to go to heaven and have a relationship with Jesus right now. So please, youth, give your best to understand what it means to be a Christian, what it means to be an Adventist. Because if we don't understand who we are right now, who is going to understand it? Nobody. So, um, I hope you guys um, find your, your way out of the maze and uh, one day we all can be in heaven. Let's pray to finish. Um, dear Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you so much for this day. Thank you because um, we have the opportunity, Lord, to learn more about your word every day. Forgive us, Lord, for not understanding who we are and for this reason, not following, following what, you, what you says that we should do, Lord. Help us not to follow the word, but follow you, Lord. Forgive our sins, Lord, and give us a good night of rest. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you so much. Well, happy Sabbath. I want to thank Blue Mountain Academy for treating us tonight with a very special musical concert and testimony that uh, definitely touched my heart, and I hope that you were blessed as well. So as we return to our dorms tonight, I would like to encourage our day students to remember that you are in the home of our Blue Mountain Academy students. You are their guests in their home. And this is Friday night. So as you go back, remember this is God's special day. Get a good sleep tonight. Keep the dorm nice and quiet. And wake up bright and early in the morning, ready for breakfast, ready to put on your concert attire, and join us here to warm up at 930. And then at 10 o'clock, we will all have Sabbath school together. And then for those of you who may be watching online still, please join in again in the morning. Our Music Fest concert will happen during the 11 o'clock service. So we welcome all of you to come back and join us as we learn more about what it means to follow Jesus. Thank you very much. Have a blessed evening.